when we work with uh, data browsers and out-of-the-box integration with SharePoint that allows us to uh, deal with uh, document management problems from directly from uh, model-driven apps. It's quite handy to address uh, document management requirements, but when we need to uh, integrate with certain actions like uh, populating word templates, executing Office scripts, uh, or dealing with certain conversions using the OneDrive actions or SharePoint as well. Well, uh, it's uh, quite limited because we only have access to the location of the file and not the necessary IDs to use these um, Power Automate actions. So in this video, I want to show you about the different IDs that we need to, when dealing with Power Automate and SharePoint files and how to obtain them. So let's start with the video. Hi, I'm Andres, and welcome to my channel. Here, we dive deep into the world of Microsoft Power Platform development and governance. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up to show your support. And if you're looking to develop solutions for your business or need training and support for your technical team, feel free to reach out through the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now, let's get started with the video. So let's pick in this example, this uh, flow where we have several actions that uh, run against a SharePoint file. So there's a SharePoint file that's in this document library over here, this file, this Excel, and uh, or, or any other. Uh, but in the end, we can do certain actions against SharePoint that uh, are, for example, get items from a list, send an HTTP request to SharePoint, create a file, run a script, Office script uh, in a SharePoint library, or populate a Word document, other stuff like converting to PDF, converting to HTML, directly using the OneDrive connector. There are very handy actions that we can use uh, and probably use very often. Now let's take a look at the, <clears throat> how do we set up this? For example, get items. When we <clears throat> take a look at the code view here, we will notice how really this action needs the IDs that we provide with the graphical user experience here, we can pick the different list names, for example. Uh, and here we would add uh, the OData queries to filter, whatever. But uh, let's take a look and notice here that it asks for a data set, which is the actual site, and then the table, uh, which is how Portman calls it, the shipment list. And there is an identifier here. You probably already know these uh, kind of goods if you've been deploying solutions to production. But let's pick, uh, take a look, for example, well, SharePoint, uh, HTTP request for my file, for example. What it needs is different inputs. And uh, if you take a look here, it will need a folder path. And the folder path is not an ID, it's something that is going to depend on the location of the document library. If we go to run script from library, um, all this information that we pick here, if we take a look at the code view, it's using different IDs. The file ID, well, if you haven't worked with that before, probably you uh, don't know what it's about, or this ID, these are OneDrive IDs, actually. And same if you uh, use the populate Word template. That is here, this ID and this other ID. So when you have this flow in development environment and then you need to deploy it to production, well, you need to handle these IDs because uh, if you are uh, handling some files in your development uh, SharePoint site, the IDs are going to be different from the one in production. So uh, let's take a look first and understand how this actually works. Because behind the scenes, we are using always here in uh, Portable the Graph API, except some things like, for example, the SharePoint, it's be request when, uh, if you take a look here, and you notice these kind of uh, API uh, actions, this is using the old SharePoint API because SharePoint comes from a, uh, uh, a different product that Microsoft created, and uh, it's been evolving over time. But uh, in the end, what Microsoft has been doing in the last, during the last years is uh, unify all their services in the Microsoft Graph API. And here we can add, access everything, the Microsoft 365 platform. So we are accessing devices, Windows. So let's take a look here. Uh, all the core services like Bookings, Calendar, uh, Excel, Outlook, Planner, SharePoint, Enterprise Mobility, Windows services, uh, Dynamics and uh, Vision Central, and of course, Power Platform, uh, Partners in the world. 
also some resources in Azure. So you can do a lot with the Graph API and, and the tendency is that this is going to be the API among APIs. And this is one of the reasons why Microsoft is the top player. If we go here to the API reference, we can skim through the different endpoints that are provided. Uh, and here, for example, list item uh, get, if you go here, get list item, you will see how to get the item from a SharePoint list, list or library. We will see that this is the same in a moment. And here uh, you can, um, in the Graph Explorer, from the documentation, clicking this button, Graph Explorer, or just Googling the app, you will uh, end up in here. And this is a test ground so that you can test the Graph API by yourself. And what we're going to do is pick this file over here using the Graph API. So in order to do that, well, we need to get some IDs as, as the documentation is telling us. We need the site ID, the list ID, and the item ID. Well, uh, I'm going to be quick here. I have other videos where I show you how to do this and it's plenty of information on the internet, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions. But the um, best way to do so, in my opinion, is go open the console here and in any given library or list, you have to type uh, page context info, page context info. Uh, like this, underscore SP page context info. And here there is an object that you can query uh, with the site ID and the list ID. Whoop, list ID. If you do that, you will find out these GUIDs and these are the unique identifiers for the site and the list. And it, let's populate this over here in the Graph Explorer. So we go here, sites, slash, then lists, slash, and go here, pick up this value, put in here, and then items, and then the item, item ID is in 95. Uh, where are we? 95. If we run this query, uh, we'll see. Well, this is information from the site. Yeah, you can from the um, ah, list item, the Excel file. You can see here. This is the name. Uh, this is the item ID, and here we have other information from the query. All right, but how can we get the information that we would need, for instance, for the execute Office script action? These IDs over here. Well, uh, you see, you can already see here that this is telling you something about a drive, script drive, etc. And so basically what we need to understand is that uh, SharePoint behind the scenes, well, we have the SharePoint service for the lists and the library is a modern experience, but also uh, under the hood, the files, the storage is stored in OneDrive. OneDrive is for unstructured file storage in Microsoft 365 ecosystem. And for, um, let's say, document management, we have SharePoint. But under the hood, under this product, we are seeing SharePoint, but files are stored in a OneDrive drive that is in the context of this SharePoint site. Uh, how can we do, uh, how can we know this? Because we can here query in the URL. We put a parameter where we select expand, expand, and uh, it's already suggested here, drive item. If we do this, we are going to get the drive item associated, you see here, graph item, associated with this file. And you will see how this works. We will see name, the Excel file, ID is this ID that we were seeing in the Power Automate Action. And then it is the idea of the file, but if we want the document library here in the parent drive, parent reference, we have drive type, document library, drive ID, this is the ID of the document library in OneDrive. Um, and then this is the ID of the item, uh, the name of the folder, but sorry, the, uh, this is the ID of the folder in OneDrive because it's the direct parent, then the path, site ID, etc. So everything is intertwined, is related here. So in order to make this uh, easier to handle, I created this uh, Power Platform solution. Let me know in the comments if you want to know about more about this, where I get this information um, in with a flow and store it in a, in a entity. Otherwise, it's too hard to manage.
So let's take a look at how this works. So let's create a, this, this is done manually here, but uh, in this example, but we would do this from a flow, for example, or action. So let's uh, actually pick this guy over here. Uh, Rene, where are you? Here, let's pick, pick the name, for example. And then the side URL, uh, that's easy to pick right from the URL bar. Uh, and then let's pick the GUID. We already grabbed it from here. Uh, and the item ID. Oops, this is the site. No, the, no, we want the library. Sorry. Okay. And then the, what's 59? Not 95. Okay. 95 oops that's a six okay if we save and behind the scenes that flow is going to execute at any moment and we'll bring up the um the different ids from uh, that we need for this guy to handle for example onedrive file one there are files excel etc and here we here we go so it's already here the flow has executed uh, and do, 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 where is the flow Let's go inside to show you around. Very simple. You can reproduce this or just ask me here is what it happened. But let's take the uh, look at the flow uh, internally. Uh, basically what we do is when we get some information from uh, from this SharePoint Online locations table and new row is added or is modified, then we need to get the site information, get item information using the uh, graph API to get the drive item. This is exactly what we did in the Graph Explorer. And then folder properties, this will allow us to get some, for example, the other information like the uh, relative path of where this is. Looking for help? We can assist you with consulting, custom development, and training for your development or digital workplace team. Go to my website, fill out the contact form, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So we saw how to retrieve these IDs, how to work with the internals of uh, SharePoint items, whether it's in a list or in a, a library. And well, I show you how to how you can automate that uh, behavior, uh, building your own uh, automated flows or uh, using the Graph API directly yourself. I hope you uh, like the video, and we'll we'll see you in the next one.